Good afternoon, everyone. Um, very happy to uh, announce today a uh, uh, very important event in my life and the life of uh, the Pawtucket Red Sox. Uh, last Friday, uh, Larry Lucchino and I, and a small group of investors, uh, purchased the uh, Pawtucket Red Sox. And we're very excited about it. It's one of the best baseball franchises, and uh, we are thrilled to uh, succeed uh, Ben Mondor and his uh, wife, uh, Madeline's ownership of the team. Uh, they have set a great example for all of us. It was a model of franchise for many years. And uh, we're very excited about uh, the opportunity to carry on his legacy. And we hope to uh, keep uh, the Tucker Red Sox in Rhode Island and to uh, play a lot more baseball here and uh, bring uh, family entertainment, uh, as Ben Mondo did, uh, at an affordable price uh, to make everybody happy. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, many years of uh, continued success in carrying on uh, the legacy that Ben Mondor started uh, uh, some uh, 38 years ago. I'd be happy to uh, answer any particular questions you may have, and uh, uh, we can begin now if you wish. What is the purchase price, and what is it that makes it important to you to keep the sure. Paw Sox here? And well, do you have a new name? Uh, well, there's three questions there. Let me take one at a time. Uh, first is uh, the... Uh, uh, the price is confidential. Uh, we have a confidentiality agreement, and uh, uh, we're, now we're not uh, allowed to disclose that. Uh, secondly, the, uh, uh, it's very important to me personally. Uh, I'm a lifelong Rhode Islander. Uh, my parents, uh, uh, my grandparents came from Ireland. My parents uh, lived here for many years. Uh, I grew up here, went to school here, uh, and I have family here. I grew, I, Met uh, my wife here, married here, raised uh, children here, had a great life uh, with, with my law firm. Uh, I've been very blessed in so many different ways. And uh, I feel it's, in my life anyway, it's uh, an opportunity for me to give back to my community, which I feel very strongly about and very passionately about. Uh, so I, I have always uh, loved the Boston Red Sox, uh, and I've had the privilege of representing them on legal matters for the past 14 years since the new owners uh, came in. So as a practical matter, uh, to me, it's a fulfillment of a lifelong dream uh, to be not just associated with the Red Sox in a legal capacity, but to actually have the uh, privilege uh, of owning their uh, AAA franchise. Larry and I are the principal uh, owners. Uh, we have eight other investors. There were friends and clients uh, uh, who have joined us in this uh, endeavor. Uh, and we are uh, really thrilled uh, with the opportunity to do something special and, and to continue to provide uh, affordable, uh, family-friendly uh, entertainment for uh, uh, Red Sox Nation, who live not only in Rhode Island, uh, but in Massachusetts, too, as well. Uh, we have, uh, actually, we draw fans in Pawtucket uh, from all over New England. About half of our fans come from Massachusetts. So uh, we, are, uh, we are thrilled to, to, to carry on the legacy, and, and uh, we hope to succeed in uh, continuing to produce uh, great Red Sox players for the parent club. And, and not only bring home championships uh, in the International League, uh, but also uh, provide players that will help us uh, bring World Series championships to Boston. And have you told the, the uh, city of Pawtucket that you're going to be moving the franchise, and, and what is the, the short and long-range plan with regards to that? Well, the short-range plan is we're in Pawtucket, and we're playing for the next, uh, at least the next two seasons, uh, maybe three. Uh, we have great fondness and affection for Pawtucket. Uh, it's, been the home of the Red Sox uh, for 45 years. We're starting our 46th year playing baseball under the Red Sox flag uh, and banner in, uh, in Rhode Island, and we're proud of that tradition. The Red Sox feel very strongly about the ties they have. Uh, we have great memories here. We cherish those memories. Uh, we had the longest uh, game in baseball played uh, in, in McCoy Stadium. Uh, we've had two perfect games pitched there. We've had some of the greatest uh, Hall of Famers uh, play in that ballpark. So. We have uh, great affection uh, for the tradition uh, of uh, McCoy and, and Rhode Island. Uh, and uh, as we look, though, to the future, uh, we believe uh, we'll have to move the franchise uh, to, to another location because it, uh, it needs substantial work. And uh, the Red Sox are a first-class organization, and they want to build first-class facilities for their players, uh, just like we did recently in uh, Fort Myers in Florida. We built a state-of-the-art a uh, beautiful uh, spring training complex and a beautiful ballpark down there that I had the privilege of working with Larry Lucchino on. And uh, we've uh, put that, put 
all new facilities in there that state of the art uh, training facilities for our players, kitchens, uh, weight rooms, hydro facilities. So uh, we would like to do the same thing for our AAA team uh, on a permanent basis. Uh, we feel uh, that uh, uh, in the long run, uh, the, the team should move to a, a, another location, an urban location. Larry Lucchino is one of the great, uh, uh, if you will, uh, uh, architects of ballparks. Uh, he has been involved with many successful creations of ballparks from beginning with uh, Camden Yards in Baltimore with uh, the mutual friend of, of, uh, of Larry's. Uh, actually, I met Larry through Edward Bennett Williams, uh, who was his uh, mentor in, in Baltimore. And then he built the uh, with Ed the ballpark in Baltimore, and he built the uh, the one in Petco Park and, and uh, for the Kansas, for the um, San Diego Padres, and then of course he went to Boston, and he's uh, uh, frankly uh, restored and uh, uh, reinvigorated Fenway Park. And last year we did a new park down in um, uh, Fort Myers, and we'd like to do another new park. Larry said I got one more park left, and uh, I'm I share his enthusiasm for that. Uh, we need a place. Uh, if we can find a place uh, in Rhode Island that is an, a, an urban ballpark. We want to create a state-of-the-art, uh, well-situated, uh, strategically located uh, baseball park uh, to accommodate some baseball games uh, that we hope will be as thrilling as our history has been in, in Pawtucket. Uh, but we want this to be more than a ballpark. Uh, we want this to be a community facility. We want this to be a venue for concerts, cultural concerts, uh, uh, live performing concerts and music. Uh, we'd like to see collegiate sports uh, played there. We'd like to see college lacrosse and football and uh, soccer. You know, we've got some great teams, college teams in, uh, in Rhode Island. The Providence College soccer team went to the Final Four that la last year. Bryant University and Brown have two nationally ranked uh, uh, lacrosse teams. Uh, uh, Brown University and, and the University of Rhode Island play some great football. We'd like, we'd like to see more activity uh, in one ballpark. And, uh, and we also want to have some cultural activity there too. Uh, uh, you know, in Fenway Park, you know, we do uh, uh, Shakespeare in the Park. We'd like to do one of those if we could. Uh, uh, we'd like to have uh, opportunities to, uh, uh, you know, if you will, watch what the Red Sox have done. I've had the privilege of being with the Red Sox for 14 years representing them. And I've seen the power of a professional uh, beloved uh, sports franchise and what they can do for charities and what they can do for the community and what they can do for culture and uh, uh, we are committed to carrying on that tradition that was started by Ben Mondor uh, we intend to uh, contribute substantially to uh, our local charities uh, we'd like to help uh, children uh, particularly charities that are associated with children boys clubs uh, boys and girls clubs CYOs uh, you know uh, schools what would be the time frame uh finalizing a relocation plan? Well, uh, we have uh, looked around to try to find a uh, suitable urban site in Providence because uh, there are certain elements in the stadium we want to have. And uh, those elements include, uh, and they're very important to us anyway and, and for our fans because we want to increase attendance. And uh, so they would include, uh, you know, visibility from the highway, for example. Uh, they would include uh, access to public transportation, both uh, rail, uh, Amtrak, and, and uh, MBTA, both north and south of Providence. Uh, we uh, would like to see uh, uh, the uh, a, a stadium or ballpark, I should say, near a uh, residences where they can walk from uh, either downtown Providence or the east side. Uh, we'd like to see people who are working in these buildings around here, uh, professional workers. There are thousands of them. Uh, we'd like to have them uh, have access to the ballpark in a five or ten minute walk. Uh, and uh, we'd like our fans to be able to come to games and enjoy uh, all the, the, the wonderful treats uh, of Providence, whether they be restaurants or shopping mm -hmm. or uh, just walking tours. So uh, we think that uh, an urban ballpark is uh, going to be a great success here, and we think it would add considerably to the, to the, to the uh, life of, uh, of Providence and the state of Rhode Island, and I think it'll be... Uh, one that uh, will serve the public interest. Jim, excuse me, Jim, can you just speak a little louder? Folks on the floor sure. are having trouble hearing you. Sure. Looking at the 195 land specifically? Well, we've looked around for various sites. Uh, uh, again, the, the real announcement today is we bought the team, but uh, the, we have looked around uh, for, at some sites, and uh, we have discovered one that uh, uh, to us is very exciting, potentially, but it's only a potential site. We haven't 
entered negotiations with the property owners. We've made a real effort to try to find a spot that would meet all the criteria that I just mentioned to you for a public ballpark. And, uh, and we think we found one, but uh, we haven't been able to do, complete our due diligence on it because uh, we couldn't really examine that ballpark uh, until we bought the team. Uh, and now that we've purchased the team, we'll, we'll finish our due diligence. We've started the due diligence. It'll take us a few more weeks to finish it. Uh, we have to examine it. It's on the Providence River, uh, so we have to look at the soil conditions there, the traffic conditions. Um, we'll have to see, talk to the property owners. Uh, the state owns a portion of it. Brown University owns a portion of it. We'll have dialogue with them on the subject, uh, and we'll dialogue with the city and the state. Uh, and uh, when we complete our due diligence, we'll determine whether or not a ballpark can be built there. It's a very tight, narrow site, uh, but that what kind of makes it exciting for us. I mean, you, you picture a ballpark, envision a ballpark down there, and the right field wall is on the riverbed. So any home runs go in the Providence River and right field. That's pretty exciting for us. Uh, so it's similar to San Francisco. So we're, 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 we're hopeful that we'll complete this due diligence uh, in, in a relatively short period of time, and then we'll determine, is this site one that on which we could build a ballpark? And then if we do that, then we have to talk to uh, the state, the city, the property owners, and see if we can't come up, uh, work with them to see if we can't come up with a, with a program, a plan uh, that would allow us to do that. Would that plan involve public funding for a stadium? Well, it'll, uh, every, uh, let me just say about the state, about the ballpark. We like to call it a ballpark, and it's more than a ballpark. Um, it's a community facility, really. But um, the, uh, we, uh, as we look forward to this uh, uh, examination and we conclude it, uh, we're going to try to uh, build a ballpark with our own funds and to, uh, uh, design it ourselves and uh, and put it up. Um, we will ask the state and the city uh, for some support, uh, much like uh, the, the existing Pawtucket Red Sox do now in, in Pawtucket. It'll probably be in the form of a lease of some type of lease. But A, we haven't concluded that this is the site that will take a ballpark. Uh, we're still examining it. Uh, we haven't designed it. We don't know the cost of it yet. So these are all kind of premature questions, but I will tell you this, that uh, our interest is in funding that ballpark ourselves with our private capital and then asking the, the, the state and the city uh, to, to join us in some fashion uh, to help us bring about this dream, this vision that we have for, for a, an urban ballpark in downtown Providence. And we'll lay out our plan and if the, if the uh, leaders of the state uh, uh, agree with us and, uh, and are as excited about our vision as we are uh, and uh, would like to see the dream that we're outlining come true, then uh, working together I'm, I'm confident we can, uh, we can uh, come up, formulate a plan to, to accomplish all that. Now, of course, if we can't, we can't, but I, uh, if maybe, the, maybe the land won't be suitable when we, when we do the final due diligence on it, engineering-wise. But uh, so far, the initial indications are it's a very tight site for a ballpark, uh, and we do want to make it more than just a baseball park, because we want to have other things there. So we're looking at that, and uh, uh, we think that's a reasonable chance that could, it could work there, but we won't know that for a few more weeks, but when we do, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll announce it. So your groups. One side. Can I just remind everyone on the line to please mute your phones? Uh, some of the folks are having problems with feedback. Thank you. Is your group's vision more than just building a ballpark? You mentioned some other things around us yeah. developing, almost like a Patriot Place in Foxborough with oh, no, the ballpark yeah. as the centerpiece? No, our, our vision is a little narrower than that. Our vision is building a ballpark uh, with our funds and, and take responsibility for the park. Uh, and then we would like to have a... Um, uh, you know, we'd like to think it will be catalyst for other people to make investments around us. Um, we've already had some preliminary conversations with uh, some people, and, and uh, one major hotel company said, we'd love to build a hotel near your ballpark, uh, which we would welcome. Uh, but we're, you know, as a Rhode Islander, uh, I know these are difficult economic times, and I know the state's struggling hard to, to take the 195 lands and to develop them in such a way that creates economic opportunity and improve our economic climate. We think this investment's a game changer you know, for Providence. It's a game changer for the state of Rhode Island. Uh, and we think that uh, if we invest in this uh, project and we have a successful uh, ballpark there that's, that uh, has multi-purposes uh, to it, uh, we think that the, uh, there's a better chance that, that the 195 lands will be developed more fully, uh, they'll be developed quicker, and we think that uh, Rhode Island will benefit from it. Uh, We've already uh, received some uh, contact with uh, some developers have contacted us and said, you know, we'd like to talk to you because uh, we think that would enhance the prospects of building a, a biomed campus across the street uh, because biomed 
uh, campuses, much like Durham when they built their ballpark, a biomed uh, infrastructure developed around it. This could happen in Providence. I don't know whether it will happen. We think it, we believe it will happen. We believe it'll be a catalytic investment on our part uh, and on the state's part and on the city's part. And so we're hopeful that takes place. But we know one thing, we, we are gonna have a, we are gonna have, we're gonna make every effort to have this uh, ballpark to be one that we can all be proud of as Rhode Islanders. Matt, mm -hmm. let's go to, Steve, let's go to Matt. You, you mentioned um, Durham, you mentioned San Francisco. Is this just a matter of, you, you feel like you grew out of McCoy, it's just, it's, it was built in the 40, 1942, it's, it's just, sure. it, you, you just need something new, state of the art? Well, I, I would tell you that uh, we have uh, deep affection for McCoy. We have a lot of memories there. Uh, and uh, a lot of our ball players, uh, uh, including those in the Hall of Fame, uh, have played there. So, you know, we have great nostalgia for, for Pawtucket, but uh, in all honesty, um, the ch times have changed, ballparks have changed, designs have changed. McCoy is the oldest stadium in uh, AAA uh, International League. Uh, most of the stadiums have been built since 1990 or something. Uh, uh, many of them in the last five years. Uh, look at Charlotte, for example. They just opened theirs last year. And what happened at Charlotte? They went from near the uh, middle to the, of, of attendance to number one in the International League. Pawtucket used to be number one in the International League. In the last five years, we've slid a little bit. Uh, of course, it's, it's a, there's an economy uh, that's, uh, that's been partially responsible for that, but so is the stadium. So is the lack of access to mass transit. So is the, uh, so is the uh, inability to find it, to, to, to see it as, as well as uh, from the highways. So uh, we think that uh, a new ballpark uh, with a Red Sox brand in, uh, in, in downtown Providence, uh, with uh, easy access to uh, rail transit from Boston uh, south, and, uh, and one other thing, you know, they're gonna build a, uh, a parking garage across the street from this potential site that we've identified, and, and they're gonna have buses there. All buses from every city and town in Rhode Island are gonna stop right across the street from this site. If we have a ballpark there, there are people in Westerly, in Warwick, in West Warwick, in, in Central Falls, in Portsmouth, in Newport. They can, they can take a bus and go to a game with their family and, and they can go home that night by just walking across the street and get on another bus and go home. You can't do that in Pawtucket. You can't get on a train and go to Pawtucket. Uh, but, you, but you can uh, in downtown Providence. So uh, we think we'll have more uh, amenities for our fans, more opportunities for them to see a game to experience uh, what so many people have experienced and liked about the Pawtucket Red Sox. So we're hopeful that uh, this location, if it proves to be as good as we think it is, and if it proves to be something we can build on, we think that'll be a, uh, a wonderful opportunity Gary. to make a difference in Providence. Jim, are you actively looking at sites in Massachusetts as this unfolds on the Rhode Island side? Is this happening simultaneously? No, we're not. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm focused, I have laser focus on Rhode Island. I'm a Rhode Islander. Uh, I have a passion for my state. I've indicated I want to give back. Uh, this is a state that's meant a lot to me and my family. Uh, I'm committed. My objective is to keep it in Rhode Island. Uh, but, but obviously all I can do is lay out a vision and lay out a plan uh, with my colleagues, uh, Larry and myself and our, our partners, and then let the state decide whether this is something they, uh, they, can, they treasure and are as excited about it as we are. What would be plan B if you couldn't, if you couldn't get it? Providence. Please mute well, your line, thank you. Excuse me, we're just gonna do one more question inside and then we'll open it up to uh, folks on the line. Thank you. Uh, one Frank, more I'm sorry folks. to hear your question. Plan B, what would be plan B if you, if you don't get Providence? Uh, plan B is to cry. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, we, we, I really wanna keep it in Rhode Island. Uh, that's my passion, that's my objective. Uh, that's Larry's uh, wish as well and the Red Sox. We have a long, successful history in Rhode Island. We like to preserve that, continue the tradition. Uh, light people's uh, lives, light up Providence at night for uh, maybe uh, with other events, 100 nights a year or something. So we don't want to think about a plan B. Uh, we're focused on, on see if this, if this land's available and if we can build on it and if the state and the city leaders feel yes, that they agree with our vision, then we'll go there. If we have to go beyond that, then uh, uh, we'll just see what happens. I, right, right now we're just laser focused on getting this done in Rhode Island. I want to keep it in Rhode Island. All right, folks, I'm gonna open it up to the folks on the line. You'll all get a chance to answer the question, so let's just try as best as possible not to uh, talk over folks. If you could just identify yourself and ask your questions, we'll give folks one question each and then go around however many times we need to. So uh, whoever's got the first, shoot. Hi, it's Amy Anthony with the Associated Press. Um, I know you 
based on that, you're going to try to build um, a ballpark with um, your own funds. And I didn't quite agree to that after that because there was a lot of feedback. But, um, you know, I think that um, I, I think that cost overruns are almost a given on a big project like this. So just curious what your plans to do if or when, you know, you, you run out of um, your own funding. And then also if you have any estimate as far as the cost right now. Thank you. Thank so you. I didn't hear it totally, but um, I can tell you that our plan currently is to uh, design and build this ballpark with our own funds, uh, to borrow the money to do that, but uh, whatever we need equity to do that. So that's our plan. Uh, uh, we can't do that alone. We're going to need some type of public support for that. And uh, and just like we, we have, the Pawtucket residents have done for years with the ballpark in Pawtucket, They've done it through a lease format. We, we would envision the same type of lease format uh, that would provide some uh, f uh, state and local support for it. Um, but for the most part, it will be designed and, uh, and be built by us uh, with our funds, and, uh, and we'll take responsibility for it. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, from the line, anyone else uh, dialed in who has a question? Okay. Could Anyone else in the room? Circle back yes. to the first question about. Five years in the market. What would be the timeline for moving or start to build out if things go well in Providence? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we will be in Pawtucket for the next two years. Very excited to be there and uh, and hopefully win another championship or two uh, the next two years in uh, in McCoy Stadium. But uh, if we're successful, if uh, if if uh, our due diligence shows that this particular potential site. Uh, is one which would uh, accommodate uh, the type of uh, ballpark we're talking about. Uh, then we would uh, enter into some serious discussions with the state and the city and the property owners, uh, probably first with the property owners, uh, and talk to them about it, which is Brown University and, uh, and the state of Rhode Island into the uh, I-195 commission, I-195 commission. So uh, uh, the earliest we could possibly do this, uh, if everything went well uh, and people were as enthusiastic as we are and as excited as we are, uh, it's possible we could break ground uh, at the end of this year and open up in April of 2017, probably more likely 2018, but uh, who knows? Uh, the sooner the better. We, we, we are committed to bringing, uh, you know, first quality uh, stadium online uh, as early as we possibly can because the Boston Red Sox want to make sure that their, their AAA team has the finest facilities, that uh, the state-of-the-art facilities that are offered in the game today. And we want to bring uh, more economic activity to the city and the state. You know, one of the things, for example, that we're excited about is if when you come to a ballpark in an urban center, and by the way, the trend is to build them in urban centers these days, uh, and there's a good reason for that, for the reasons I just stated, the, the transportation reasons and the nearness to uh, residences and people can walk, the walkability from offices and from residences. But there's also the idea that people can, uh, can drive in if they want to and uh, go to a ball game and have dinner before or after the game or do some shopping or, or just stroll through the city. And uh, those are things that people want to do. We want to, we want to bring that experience to our fans. Uh, they're loyal fans. They're, they've been terrific fans. And we want to give them all the comforts that, that our competitors in the AAA League are offering to their fans. So uh, our friends are deserving of every bit uh, of the benefits that uh, other teams are, are offering their fans, and we want to carry that out uh, as well. Anyone else on the line with questions? Uh, yes, uh, Ethan Shorey with the Valley Breeze. Just wondering, uh, it's not like Pawtucket never had a chance, is that the case? Well, uh, no, uh, Pawtucket, we're going to be there for two years, as I said uh, earlier. and, and uh, uh, But as we looked uh, into the stadium, we did some feasibility work. Uh, on Pawtucket, and uh, we, we have an idea of, of what it would take to uh, to uh, make the necessary improvements there. It's very expensive. Uh, but, you know, that's that's a stadium that uh, is about 70 years old, uh, and uh, and it doesn't have the amenities that uh, that other uh, AAA teams are offering their players. And we we want to give our players uh, an equal chance to develop their talents. And uh, exercise and work out and, and get the therapy, uh, hydrotherapy, for example, when they have injuries. We want to give them as much of opportunity as, their, as our competitors are giving uh, their players. So, uh, as to Pawtucket, uh, 
you know, the, the problem is Pawtucket, it's just the infrastructure isn't there anymore. Um, that, bu that building was built in 1940 or so, and uh, uh, times have changed, the ballparks have changed. Uh, we, we want an intimate ballpark. It'll have the same capacity as Pawtucket, uh, about 10,000. Uh, and uh, but the fans will be closer to the action. They're going to be on the ground. They can talk to the players before the game and after the game, get pictures with them, get their autographs, shake their hands. Uh, and uh, that's difficult to do in Pawtucket because it's, it's, it was built in a different time and designed differently. Uh, the, the design of ballparks have changed. And these are the new ballparks are now more intimate. They're urban-centered. Uh, they're very flexible. And, uh, and, and this ballpark that we're trying to make, we, we want to make it the best we can possibly make it. Anyone else on the line with questions? No, we don't. It's premature. We haven't designed it yet, so we can't really uh, talk about cost about it yet. We can tell you that ballparks recently have been built uh, for AAA teams, and they're in the 60 to $70 million range. Uh, but we don't know what this ballpark's going to cost. It hasn't been designed. We don't know what the soil conditions are. Uh, so it's premature to even uh, think about that. And, and that'll be one of the things that'll show up in the due diligence. How much is it going to cost? Uh, are there any special soil conditions that's going to increase the cost here? Are there any traffic conditions that have to be uh, remedied? So we're not sure uh, at this point. It's premature to think about that. What we do want to think about is the fact that uh, uh, you know we're we're trying to keep the team in Rhode Island. That's our objective. Uh, that's my wish. Uh, that's my dream. That's my vision. And uh, and it's the vision of the Red Sox and the, and the dream of the Red Sox as well. So uh, and, and my and my partners, uh, all of whom are uh, you know they love baseball and uh, and they love Rhode Island and and they would like to see us. Uh, involved uh, in a catalytic way to help spur economic development in the city of Providence. Mr. Skepik, Hold do on, you Steve, remember what? your first ball, uh, first experience at McCoy? Or I do. Ball I do, and Fenway as well. Uh, Tell us. Yeah, I was. Uh, I went there uh, uh, many years ago with uh, with my uh, my dad, and uh, we had uh, he bought some hot dogs, and uh, uh, it was a great experience. And I remember similarly with my dad. And, my brother and my sister and my mother and Fenway Park. So uh, I've been there many times. Uh, I've enjoyed it. It's an intimate ballpark too. Uh, had some great improvements back 12 years ago thereabouts uh, that made a big difference. Uh, but the world has changed. Uh, stadiums have changed. Designs have changed. Our competitors are moving ahead. And uh, you know anything about the Red Sox? We don't want the competitors to move ahead. So we're gonna we're gonna build a ballpark that matches the best of any of them. So uh, we want our players to be uh, well trained and uh, well cared for, and enjoy the experience here. And as I say, you know we've got a lot of other plans. We we want to make this uh, a venue for a lot of other things, just uh, uh, more than baseball. It's more than a ballpark. On the line, I think I heard a gentleman before Amy's question. Anyone else with questions on the line? Hi. Yes. We have no idea. In fact, we have no idea what the cost is. We haven't even designed it, so I can't really answer that. I can tell you that uh, if we build a ballpark downtown, we're going to build it uh, with our funds, and uh, we'll be responsible for the building of it. And then we'll ask the state uh, and, the, and or the city, probably the state, to uh, uh, to help us in some way. And we'll use McCoy Stadium as a as an example of, of how it was done in the past. And we'll we'll work together with the state to see whether we can find a way to do that. Uh, so there's a many bridges to cross. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, in this particular site, there's a pedestrian bridge that's being designed to walk right to the to the corner of uh, the right field corner of this site if we have a ballpark there. So that'd be kind of cool. Uh, and uh, we'll, we 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 think uh, we think this is a great site for it. But again, it's too early to tell. It's only potential. We haven't finished our due diligence, and we have a lot of people to talk to before we can make any conclusions. Okay. A, a final round of anyone on the line with questions. All right, hearing none, we'll just do a final round of questions in the room. Frank. Jim, uh, your partners have put up a lot of money to, to buy this team and are looking to invest even more money. Part of the attraction for fans uh, at McCoy Stadium has been the fact that they've had free parking, inexpensive, inexpensive concessions, inexpensive tickets. 
Um, is that going to continue? In, yeah, in let me let me let me speak to that because that's an important consideration for us. Ben Mondor uh, set a standard, a model to uh, for all minor league teams. Uh, keep the cost as low as you can make it and uh, make it affordable for the average working family, uh, not only to go to the game themselves, but to take their family. Uh, I'm committed to continuing that tradition. Uh, I just don't want to honor Ben Mondor. I want to emulate him. Uh, he, he was a visionary and he had a great heart. And uh, Larry Lequeen and I uh, want to work and hard every day to carry on his tradition and uh, to uh, preserve the, the, uh, the effort he made to make this very affordable, wholesome family entertainment. Now, it is true that uh, uh, Pawtucket um, uh, has some free parking, but they, not, every, not all parking is free there, and some of the parking is pretty far away, some of the parking is on dirt, uh, and uh, we, we hope to have some uh, uh, convenient parking here. I will say this to you, we think there'll be less cars coming, more fans coming to Providence, and less cars coming. Because picture the thousands of people who work in these buildings have already parked their car for work and they're just gonna walk over to the ballpark for the game. Picture the people that live in the city or on the east side and wanna walk to the ballpark uh, and enjoy a, sp a special evening, whether it's a concert or a ball game. And they've already parked their cars. Uh, picture the people that are gonna take trains from Boston or from Wickford uh, on MBTA or, or, or Amtrak. Uh, they, they'll be parking out of the state and they'll be coming in out of the site, out of the city and coming in. So there'll be, we think there'll be more fans and less cars. Uh, and I think that, uh, and, and, and not to mention the bus, uh, that we have, uh, we'll have the best, one of the best bus services in this particular site of any ballpark that we can think of. So uh, uh, we'll think there'll be many less uh, cars uh, in the city uh, than there would be in Pawtucket for the same number of fans. And we think we'll have more fans, uh, which is very important. So. Um, uh, our parking, we are, we are going to try to uh, invest some of our money in parking and, uh, and, and uh, we're working with uh, Frank Galvin next door. He's developing uh, and restoring the power plant. It's a $207 million project and he wants to build a, a garage there. I, we, he and I have had conversation on that subject. We want to enlarge that garage and I told him that uh, uh, we'd be prepared to invest half of the money and own it equally with him because we're great partners in a garage with him. He wants parking on Monday through Friday during the day, and I want parking on nights and weekends. Uh, and uh, so it's a great marriage. It would, uh, it would be very, very economical for both of us. As a result of which, uh, it's my commitment to, to have very low cost parking for games. If you have a game ticket, and you check out of that lot, you pay you know $2 maybe for parking, $3, whatever, some very low price for parking and not the $20 or $25 we're used to seeing in, in some parking facilities downtown. We want to make, the, we're following Ben Mondor's plan. We want to make this affordable, convenient, uh, friendly, uh, and amenable to families. We want to build a, a, a berm in left field, by the way, that will accommodate families. And I can see them coming from the east side, for example, or from downtown province with you know baby carriages or kids. We're going to put maybe some swings out there in the left field and, and grass plain and some hot dog roasts out there and have kids and young families come watch the game and play with the kids at the same time. So uh, that was another innovation in Pawtucket and we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna emulate Ben Mondo's plan. We're gonna do, the, we're gonna do it with a new ballpark in downtown like Providence. Sounds like it's been a lot of fun putting this together. Uh, I have, I have. It's a dream come true for me, you know, as a, as a long time, lifelong Red Sox fan and as a, and as a person who uh, has a great uh, passion for Rhode Island and wants to give back. Uh, to, uh, to a state that's helped me a lot and, and uh, given me a great life here. Uh, I'm, I'm very eager to start. I can't wait to get started on it, frankly. Might be premature again, but have you thought at all about a name, a name change? We have uh, thought about a name. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I met with the mayor of Pawtucket last night. Uh, I wanted to meet with the mayor of Pawtucket before I met with any other governmental official on a face-to-face -face briefing on this because I want to give him the benefit of our, our feelings and, and uh, talk about uh, the possibility of moving out. Uh, and uh, he said, you know, how disappointed he was. And I said, I know. And he said, uh, what are you going to call it? You know, he said, it's always been the Pawtucket Red Sox. And uh, I said, well, you know, uh, by the way, uh, I have to confer with my partner, Larry, who I, I haven't, I have my own feelings on this name, and I hope Larry agrees with me. And if he doesn't, we'll have to work it out. But we'll do everything unanimously. Uh, but, uh, uh, 
I would like to call it the Rhode Island Red Sox, uh, and I'll tell you why I do that. This team doesn't belong to a city. It belongs to the state, uh, and it belongs to people in Westerly, in Central Falls, in Portsmouth, uh, Warwick, West Warwick, Coventry, uh, East Providence. It belongs to everybody, uh, Bristol. And so uh, it should bear the name of the state, in my opinion. Now, I'll have to confer my, my dear friend Larry on that subject, because uh, he and I are doing this together. But I think that's the best uh, name for this state. Now, by the way, it won't be the first time they've been called the Rhode Island Red Sox. The year before Ben Mondor uh, bought the team, for one year it was called the Rhode Island Red Sox. Uh, we're going to bring that name back. Uh, at least I'd like to try to, uh, uh, with, with Larry's permission, of course. Last <laughs> questions. Anybody else? Thank you all on the line for joining us and for your patience. We appreciate it. And for everyone here in the room, we're going to log off now. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll be happy to stay around for more questions if you have them. I'm not trying to block anybody. Uh, when, did you first, uh, mm. when did you first get involved with uh, the potential sale? Uh, probably close to two years ago. Uh, really? After Ben Mondor passed away, uh, I'm a lawyer for the Red Sox, and so yeah. we had discussions about uh, maybe we should start uh, owning our minor league teams uh, because they're important assets. Those assets are our mm -hmm. players, and they're, we're trying to nurture them. And, uh, and you know, uh, we thought maybe we should start doing that. And so I started discussions at that time uh, with representatives of Mrs. Mondor. Uh, ben had passed away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it was too early, probably. And uh, so those conversations continued, sp uh, continued sporadically on and off. Uh, myself and uh, uh, their, her, her representatives. And uh, it got to be, uh, I think, uh, about, a, about uh, I don't know, eight or nine months ago, we decided to get more serious about it. And we had some further discussions with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it eventually led to uh, a purchase sale agreement. Uh, uh, for Mrs. Mondor, this was a very difficult decision to sell. I mean, she'd been involved for 38 years with her husband in this. Uh, she wasn't involved so much in the day-to-day -day operations as Ben was, but she, you know, it was part of her life. Uh, every day she talked about Ben with the Red Sox. So uh, uh, she told me that it was a, uh, uh, it was like an amputation to sell this team of a, of a limb. And I'm very empathetic with that. I can understand that entirely. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. She's very charitable, just like Ben was. And, uh, and she's going to, uh, uh, I think she's happy now. I think she's content. It's a, uh, there's a lot of pressure on owning a, a, a ball team, and uh, and she had other things to do, and, and she had other charities she wants to support, and uh, it was time uh, for her to uh, to close the book. You met with the mayor of Pawtucket last night. You I met did. With the mayor of Providence today. I met him this morning. Yes. How did that go? It went very well. I, I got a very warm, uh, positive response from the mayor and the city council president, actually, uh, Luis Zapante, and uh, uh, I think they're. Uh, very happy that we're considering uh, Providence, uh, and uh, at least I hope they are. They, they seem to indicate they were, uh, and I take them at their word. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I know it's a difficult day for for, for Pawtucket, uh, but I want to I want you to know that we're not. You never leave your home, and Pawtucket's been our home for 46 years, and I told uh, the mayor of Pawtucket that uh, the Red Sox Ben Mondor was very charitable with, with uh, entities in Pawtucket, uh, Boys and Girls Club, and Sisters of the Poor, and a lot of other charities. And uh, they give a lot of money a year. And I promised, I committed to the mayor, that I'll continue those charitable contributions, even when I'm not there. And I said, you know, we're not moving too far away. And there'll be kids in Pawtucket who would like to go to the games. And there'll be occasions we're going to bust some of those kids over. And, and we're going to have clinics, baseball clinics. We hope to have baseball clinics with some of our professional players. We'll invite the kids from Pawtucket over in Providence. And uh, we'll, we'll always be associated with Pawtucket in, in, in mind and heart. Uh, and so we're, I told the mayor we'll continue our charitable contributions. We'll continue to reach out to Pawtucket uh, to, to make them part of our continued her uh, heritage. We're Rhode Island is first. We're not, we're not tied to a city. And I said to the mayor, I know it's difficult wearing your Pawtucket hat. Put your Rhode Island hat on just for a second. This is great to keep us in Rhode Island. It's great to have new jobs in Rhode Island, construction jobs, permanent jobs. It's great to help the city and the state uh, develop a, a better economic climate. It's, it's great to help sell the, we think we'll have a catalytic effect on the sale of the 195 lands, maybe even a biomed campus, hopefully. 
when you're wearing your Rhode Island hat, you're proud of that, and you're saying, well, that's a great thing. We want people to drive an Interstate 95, an Interstate 195, and when they go back and forth and they see the lights on at night, we want them to say, wow, Providence and Rhode Island's alive and well, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're doing the best they can to make this a better state. We want to be part of that. Can, can you do something like this? Would you re need a tax break of some kind to uh, be We haven't focused on any of those details yet, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, we, we've only owned the team for three days, but we have done some feasibility studies. Uh, we've commissioned uh, you know, an economic impact study, what it would be. Uh, we've commissioned a feasibility study on uh, you know, is this land buildable? Uh, those due diligence uh, exercises uh, will take uh, a little bit longer to complete. Uh, our hope is that uh, in the very near term we'll complete those. And if they conclude that this is a ballpark land, this is a land that's suitable for a ballpark, uh, then we'll share those with everybody. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll start working with the landowners to talk to them about do they share our passion, will they, will they join us in this dream? And then we'll go to the governor and the, uh, the uh, I-95 commission and Brown University and say, Will you share our passion? Will you will you join us in this endeavor? Uh, I, I I've had some preliminary conversations with Brown, and uh, I can tell you that uh, the, uh, there, there's some uh, warmth there. There's some uh, uh, interest in in having a further dialogue. <coughs> uh, the new Brown president has uh, led the investment to uh, you know move Brown across the river. The medical schools across the river now. Uh, that uh, that uh, 207 million dollar power plant restoration. Uh, has got uh, the top floors are for Brown ad administrators. The nursing schools there for URI and, and the Renown College. Brown's going to put up some uh, apartments further down for their graduate students. Uh, this is all part of the neighborhood. Uh, so obviously, uh, an investment on our part in this uh, area is a uh, is a stimulant for more investment. Uh, we think it'll lead to more investment. Uh, it'll certainly increase the values of the land down there and. Uh, and we hope, uh, we hope it makes a difference. We think it will. I said earlier, we believe this is a game changer. It's a game changer for Rhode Island. It's a game changer for the capital city. And uh, uh, we think it'll be transformative. It'll, it'll transform us. And we think that people will get excited about it. I hope they do. Um, I mean, the Red Sox nation is alive and well here. And the, the Red Sox brand is very strong here. And we have passionate fans. And, I think they want to come to New Ballpark and they want to be in downtown Providence and enjoy the, all the benefits of being in Providence. Uh, so, and watching home runs go in the, uh, go in the river, that'd be kind of fun. Anybody uh, else? We could, we could go on all day. Yeah. Yeah. I could go on all day. I, listen, yeah. I could talk for hours on this subject because uh, I'm passionate about it. I think so. All right. Has, have you met any, any roadblocks at all in, in your discussions with uh, anybody as far as what you want to do? No. In fact, uh, the more I talk to people, the more excited uh, they become. Uh, at least I sense that. Uh, in fact, let me turn the tables. Can I have an interview with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> now, and by the way, this will be, awesome. cameras are off, by the way. <laughs> cameras are off. Uh, and the microphones are off. Uh, I would like to hear your feedback. I, I would like it's to. It's good that there's a local group that has bought the, the team. Well, don't forget, it's, it's five Rhode Island, five Massachusetts. So it's evenly balanced. And even the it's two managing. Ten from Massachusetts. Yes, even yeah. the two managing partners, one from Rhode Island, one from Boston. So. We have evenly matched this. It's really New England, mm -hmm. but um, but I'd like to hear. Do, are you, do, do you get a sense that this would be exciting for the capital city? I think as long as it stays in Rhode Island. I won't quote you, by the way. This yeah, is just. Well, <laughs> I think as long we'll as it, it, it stays. Right? right. As long as it stays in Rhode Island, I think it's a, it's a good thing for the state. I want to keep it Rhode Island. Yeah. I, I don't want to entertain thoughts of leaving Rhode Island. Uh, this is uh, this is my way of giving back. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think fans, you know, may be concerned that geez. You know, these guys have invested a lot of money. They're businessmen. They want to get a return on their investment. Will I still be able to afford to go? Will I still be able to go and take my family and buy the hot dogs? And the, I'm, you know? I'm glad you asked that question because I heard somebody else ask it earlier. And, and let me repeat again. Uh, I want to follow Ben Mondor's plan. And it's, uh, I don't want to raise tickets. I want to be able to have tickets that are affordable for everybody to come to a ball game. We're going to have different classes of ticket mm -hmm. sales. You know, they're going to be there are going to be some corporate suites here that they don't have in, in other places. Um, uh, we we, strictly, have some in, we have some in Pawtucket too, by the this way. This isn't strictly a philanthropic uh, endeavor. I well, mean, you guys I, want to make money. Let right? me say this to you. I told my uh, this is off the record for a second. I told my partners uh, understand. I, I appreciate that you understand that I'm passionate about this and I'm biased for Rhode Island. Uh, 
uh, I will also tell you that I don't want to lose money, okay? But I'm not in this for money. I'm in this, I, I, I want to, look, I'd like to make some money, of course, but this isn't, it's like Ben Mondo, this wasn't about making money. This is about providing wholesome, family, affordable entertainment, contributing to your community, making a difference in people's lives. The people who've invested this money in this property, or I should say in this team with me, every one of them is very affluent. They're very successful businessmen, they're very savvy. Uh, they share some of my idealism for this uh, project. We're not in it to make a lot of money, we're in it to make a difference. And uh, this, is a, this is a ballpark that, this is more than a ballpark to us. This is more than just playing baseball. This is about making a difference in our state. Can I quote you on that? You can quote me on that. <laughs>